What is going on guys? Today we're going to be installing a Denali brand <laughs> snowplow on this 2004 Polaris Sportsman 400. Hopefully everything fits. As it seems to be a bit of a gamble, everything I purchased for this 04 turns out to not fit because it ends up being for a 05 to 2010. So hopefully this works. Like I said, it's a Denali brand plow. Uh, I guess, you know, I purchased it as a kit, but the instructions here say Viper plow system. So I'm guessing the mount is Viper brand and it comes separately from the Denali plow. Uh, but I did order it as a kit together. I got the whole kit online from the ATV Superstore, and I believe it was about 385 bucks. I'll post a link in the video, video description uh, where you can get it. But yeah, at the time, I think it was 385 bucks, and I can't remember for sure, but I think they give you a couple options for blade length. Uh, I went for the 50-inch. I didn't want to get too big of a blade. It's only a 400, so not sure how much it's going to be able to push, but I did want the blade to at least be as wide as the wheeler. All right, so admittedly, this is my first plow install, so take everything with a grain of salt here. I'm going to try to explain everything best I can and figure it out as I go along. This exact kit actually came with two wear bars for the blade, uh, so that's nice. Just going to put one on now, of course. So for this step, all we need is the blade, uh, one of your blade wear bars, and then this package of carriage bolts with washers and nylock nuts. Uh, you'll need, at least in my instance, this is a 14 millimeter. So I got my impact with a 14 mil socket on there. Uh, you could use a 916, so it's just gonna be a little bit looser. And per the directions, it says that this step takes the most time just because they say um, a lot of the support ridges uh, back here kind of might get in the way. So um, they're saying that you gotta Put the bolts through and then kind of start the nuts right away before you push the bolt all the way through and we may need to use an open end wrench uh, to tighten uh, some of these carriage nuts so we'll see how big of a pain it is and get going with that right now so i'm sure this is part of what they're talking about if i was to push this carriage bolt and push the blade all the way flush uh, i wouldn't be able to get that nut started because of the angle, uh, it would hit this right here. So I did have to just push the bolt in a little bit and then slip the washer on and get the nylock nut started before pushing the bolt all the way in. All right, all of the blade edge bolts are in. And seeing this now, I can definitely see why they say this is the longest and most time consuming part. Uh, we're definitely not gonna be able to get a socket on here. We're not gonna be able to get a ratchet wrench probably. It's just too tight of clearances. I'm uh, gonna have to use the old school open end uh, 14 mil wrench to tighten all of these bolts, which on this 50 inch blade, there's seven of the bolts. So I they, they included an extra one. I don't know if that's a spare or if we're gonna use it a little bit further down the road here, or if they just include an extra bolt in case you get the 60 inch plow blade not sure but i do have one extra now if you're not familiar with how this kind of carriage bolt works as you see it's a flat head here there's no way to hold that side of the fastener the only thing that keeps it in place is you can barely see it here but the little shank that passes through the blade is square and then the hole in the blade is also square so it keeps it um, from turning completely when you're tightening it so what you have to do is make sure to keep the head flush against this blade so that square stays engaged and uh, keeps the head from spinning so you got to push constant pressure here while you're tightening with the wrench now the directions say to start by tightening the centermost bolts and working your way towards the outsides which i agree with the only thing i'm going to add to that is that i would recommend <clears throat> tightening all the bolts to the point that um, the heads are now flush and the squares on the shank of the carriage bolts are fully engaged, but you can still, you know, there's still a little bit of wiggle to it. It's not super tight yet. And what that's gonna do is, if they didn't drill the blade or the edge of the plow um, perfect, that'll, that'll allow you to get a little bit of movement where once everything is kind of snug, you can move the blade or the edge of it um, as needed to get everything lined up. Then, once you have all the square shanks um, for sure, engaged in the holes of the cutting blade. Um, now you can go ahead and start in the center, work your way towards the outers, tightening these down. Uh, these are roughly a 3 8 diameter bolt. And considering you have to use an open end wrench to tighten them, um, I would 
bet money on, you're probably good to go ahead and tighten them to the point where the wrench is going to round out the nut, which obviously you don't want to do, but you don't really have to worry about breaking them. So just go nice and tight with them uh, with a hand wrench and check them periodically. They should stay pretty tight with these nylock nuts. As you can see, I can pretty much push as hard as I want until the wrench is about to slip and these bolts aren't budging. So they're pretty stout bolts. Um, as you see there, I was using my sweatshirt to push down on the wrench because after tightening a couple of these that tight uh, by hand, it starts to hurt a little bit. All right, the blade is fully bolted to the edge and now I'm gonna install the feet, which both, as you can see here, had like saran wrap around them. There's a cotter pin in with each of them. Don't lose that. These are just gonna slide in from the bottom and you're gonna set your height however you want it. I'm gonna have mine so the blade edge is as close to the ground as possible and then just push the cotter pin through and bend it over. You could also replace these with like uh, quick disconnect pins if you want, get some from the hardware store. There we go. Um, I'm not gonna bend the cotter pins over just yet though because I may need to adjust the height. I gotta see how, uh, what the pitch of the blade is gonna be like first. Now that the blade is fully put together, we can start putting the push tube assembly together. So we are gonna start with the push tube bulkhead itself. And then we are gonna take the slotted top plate here and you wanna have it, you see there's a circle cut out here. You wanna make sure that this is flipped so that the circle is on the top. You don't want this upside down like this. Must must be like that and then you want to put this piece on like so with um, the angled gussets pointing upwards like this and the slots towards the circle. What you want to do is get the middle slot lined up with the slot on the push tube assembly and what that's going to do is kind of get this ring centered around these welded on nut holes something like that. Next this plastic ring is going to go down and of course that's gonna line up with the holes, just like so. Once the plastic ring is on, then we do the metal ring, line up the holes again. And finally the slotted locking bracket, which is gonna go on just like this. This little support bracket is gonna come from that way. And you wanna have the little slot lined up with the other middle slots that we've had lined up here. Then we're gonna take our bag of supplied, uh, six supplied bolts M8 by 30 millimeter, and each one is gonna get a washer and a lock washer put on it. I probably would go one step further and use a little bit of Loctite, just cause I'm a little OCD and paranoid, but at least it does have a lock washer. So you're gonna make six assemblies that look just like this. And then of course, you're gonna get all your bolt holes lined up. And I recommend starting all six of them before you tighten them down. Make sure when you're putting the washers on that you put the lock washer on first and then the normal washer. So the lock washer goes between the washer and the head of the bolt. As you see here, I'm starting my last bolt. And if you're gonna torque these with like a torque wrench, I would say 20 foot pounds to 30, no more than 30 for sure. Uh, it's a 13 millimeter head, so we're gonna need a 13 mil socket. I think, oh yeah, I did bring a torque wrench home. I'm gonna zip these down quick with the impact and then torque them to uh, 25 and then we might stretch it to 30. We'll see how it goes. All right, that was 30 foot pounds. And like I said, I definitely wouldn't recommend going higher than that with this size bolt, but it is holding just fine at 30 as you can see. And they do not provide a torque spec that I'm seeing on the directions. So just gonna stick with this. All right, next we got a baggie that's got a couple of little speed clips there, a couple of shoulder bolts, a spring, and then there's this guy here, our little latch. The latch is gonna go on this side of the mounting bracket there, and it's gonna face just like this. So this little beak part is gonna go in there. We're gonna use one of the silver shoulder bolts, and the bolt is gonna go through this in here. And at the same time, we have to install that spring and the spring is gonna go over this little notch and sit on top of this middle bolt right here. All right, real quick before we do that though, I lied to you. <laughs> the silver shoulder bolts get used up here pretty quick. 
it's the smaller uh, black shoulder bolt that has this longer smooth shank on it with a washer and a nylock nut. That's what we want. It's gonna come through from the side here. You see it's an Allen socket. And that smooth shoulder is gonna allow this to rotate freely. As you can see, I got everything lined up for that notch right there. So now I just need to go ahead and put the washer and nut on. Also that smooth section of shank on the bolt, what that's gonna do is allow us to tighten this bolt up, but it's not gonna pinch this piece here that has to pivot. So it'll still be able to move freely. But before I tighten everything up, I'm gonna get that spring jammed under here. And to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and slip it over the bolt and then compress it by hand, which I'm sure is easier with two hands, but you know, gotta hold the camera. There we go. Ta-da! So you'll need a 3 16th Allen key or socket to hold this bolt while you use a 13 or a half inch socket to tighten this up. Uh, if you're really in a bind, there is a little bit of knurling on this bolt head where you could try to hold it with the pliers, channel locks, or vice grips while you tighten this side with the half inch or 13 mil socket. Uh, we're just gonna go until it bottoms out. Like I said, it's gonna tighten itself on the shank. And once it gets to that point, there's no use in going any tighter. Uh, the nylock nut will hold it in place. There we go, it's fully tightened. The bolt is enough through where the nylock on the nut is engaged. As you see, it can still rotate and we have no binding issues. You do get a little bit of side to side play with it. This is you know, one of the cheaper complete plow kits I could find. So I don't claim that this is the greatest quality in the world or anything. Uh, it's just a steel plow. I don't think it's even powder coated. It's just black paint. So um, just kind of wanted to keep it cheap. Just a little note there, but continuing on, there we go. We're all done with that portion of it. Next, we install the two silver Allen shoulder bolts that I got mixed up with earlier. One on each side here. The head comes from the outside, and then you'll slip the washer and the nylock nut on. You can try the pliers trick again if you don't have the right Allen socket. The correct Allen size, at least for this one, is a 5 16 and then a 14 millimeter or 9 16 right here to tighten the nut. Uh, the purpose of these bolts, per the directions, is they act as a hard stop for the snowplow blade. Uh, and they say they recommend starting at the lowest of the three holes um, to start with, and you can adjust it as you go. However, their picture kind of shows the bolt going through the middle hole. I went ahead and put mine in the lowest one, just like the directions say to do. Uh, might have to adjust that down the road, we'll see, but just gonna zip these tight now. There we go. All right, now this part's a little bit tricky, but I'll tell you some tricks to figure it out. And I can already tell by the angle of the plow, it's already uh, cambered too far forward, castered too far forward. So I'm definitely gonna have to move that bolt uh, either to the upper position or back one. But what I've done is leaned the blade against my heavy tool chest here. And then I've got my Milwaukee bit driver jammed underneath the push tube assembly here because what we need to do is get the push tube assembly in between uh, the webbing supports on the plow. As you can see, there's a small hole that's part of this and it is lined up with the bigger hole in the plow blade. Uh, we are gonna have to do a little bit better than that though. So we take these assemblies here. Uh, these came two bolts, washers, and nuts in a little bag. <clears throat> You've got 18 millimeter head here, 19 millimeter nut, and each assembly has a smaller and a bigger washer. The smaller washer actually centers the whole bolt assembly in this hole. It's about exactly this size. Um, so what I recommend doing is putting the small one in first, and now you can see our hole doesn't line up. So now we need to move the blade away from the push tube accordingly until we can get the bigger washer and the bolt through. You're gonna feed it through from the outside and then it's just gonna be the nut on the inside with no washer. 
All right, it looks like we have, yep, we've got the hole lined up pretty good now. There we go, so a little washer in there, big washer covers it up with the bolt, and then we have our nylock nut that is gonna go with the blue nylon uh, facing away from the bolt. And we're gonna go ahead and tighten that down. I believe that first little washer that we put in also acts as this as a spacer. So this thing should probably get tight. I don't know if once this is tight, if it'll still be able to pivot or not, but we're gonna go ahead and cinch this down quick, see what happens. All right, so they do not rotate once you tighten them down. They stay pinched where they're at. So we'll see how the whole blade stop thing works. And then when I tighten that side, you'll notice that this side friggin' popped out. So may need to loosen that one and get this one lined up again. So keep an eye on that. Don't just tighten them both down. You might have an issue like this going on. Both bolts tight and you can still um, pivot the blade a little bit. So I'm not concerned with that. Now we're gonna install both springs and eyelet bolts. The way that the directions say to do it is that they want the opening of the hook facing downwards, just like shown here, instead of having the opening here. So they want it like that. And then you're gonna just hook your eyelet bolt and it's gonna come through this hole that's directly in line. <clears throat> You'll see there's three on the top here. The left one goes through the left hole, got a washer and then two nuts, just like the directions say. And then now we're gonna repeat the same steps for uh, the spring that goes in here, again with the opening facing down, and it's gonna go in this hole. There we go. And they don't say exactly how far to thread these in or anything like that. They just say to tighten them until they're taut. And then if the blade trips too easily to adjust them tighter. So in other words, um, what we want to do now is have the blade the top of it tipped all the way back until it's uh, hitting our locks. And then you're gonna get these snug, these are just finger tight right now, and there's just a tiny bit of tension on them. So I'm probably gonna um, hold this with either a crescent wrench or a pliers, just like that. And then use a 14 mil or a 9 16 to tighten this lower nut, just maybe a half inch worth, just to get a little bit of tension on it. And then what I'll do is I'll tighten the top jam nut, hold the bottom one and tighten the top one and jam them together so they don't loosen up. Uh, what these springs do is if you're going along and you hit something that's really solid, rather than damaging the plow or whatever it is that you hit, uh, what it'll do is it'll tip the blade forward and kind of allow the blade to go up and over whatever it is that you hit. So if you're just plowing with it and you're, you know, plowing just snow and it's tipping over too easily, then you'll want to tighten these down more um, to keep that blade held back. There we go. I'm just going to start with something like that. I've got about an inch and a half of slack sticking out there. And there's a little bit of tension, nothing extreme. And that is going to complete the assembly of the plow. Now we just need to mount it to the wheeler. All right, now I apologize for the bad lighting and the bad shots for a this next coming up part because due to the nature of just the position where it's at, you can't get a good angle and it's not well lit. Uh, what you need to do is you'll see here's the front of the ATV. We're going to come underneath the left side here. And if you look at the skid plate here, there's three holes cut out uh, on the left side here. What you need to do is make sure that the frontmost hole here on the top side isn't caked with mud. So what I've done is take a pry bar and I've gone in here and I've scraped off all the mud on the top side around that hole because this truss bracket that came with uh, the mount is gonna sit just over the frame rail like that and the side there's one side of it that has two holes and one side that has one hole the side that has one hole is gonna go on the inner side it's gonna go over the top of it and on the inner side of the frame and it's gonna sit right over the top of that hole where we cleaned the mud away and there's gonna be a bolt that goes through there to kind of pinch it so now with that truss in position we want to take this lower mounting bracket and you'll see there's like a circle cut on one side of it that is gonna to go towards the uh, driver's side, if you will, of the ATV. 
just like this. So the circle is over to that side. And how it's gonna go, per the directions anyway, is you can see there's one, two, three, four holes in the center of the skid plate here. This is going to cover up all of them except the rearmost hole. So it's going to go something like this. And as you can see, I have the truss up there. Everything's lining up. What we're going to do is take one of the supplied 5 16 bolts, and it's going to go through this hole right here, closest to the center. You're going to leave the washer on the bolt and feed the bolt up from the bottom and then put a nut on the top side of the truss. And as the plate goes up, the bolt is gonna go through that hole in the skid plate that we cleared away the mud from. All right, so I've got the 5 16 bolt and washer coming from the bottom and I got the nut started on the top side so that bolt is passing through the bottom plate and the truss and the nut is on the top side of the truss. Uh, it's just finger tight right now to kind of hold everything in place. Now we're gonna add two 5 16 bolts. One of them is gonna come up right here through this hole. The other one's gonna come up through this hole. There's no washer. The bolt is gonna come up from the bottom and the nut's gonna go on the top side. Here is the two quarter inch bolts and nuts. Uh, again, I'm just gonna finger tight these. I'm not gonna tighten everything up yet until everything's into place. Now on the passenger side, if you will, or the right side of the ATV, you're gonna have three holes in the skid plate, uh, just like we did on the driver's side here. And you need to clear any sort of mud or debris out away from around the two front holes. The back one can leave alone, but those two uh, need to be clear. At least if you're gonna do this like I'm gonna do it. The paper directions, as well as their directions online, literally say nothing else about installing these other two 5 16 bolts. They just mentioned the one 5 16 bolt uh, that we use that goes through the truss to kind of hold it up into place. But they do show these two bolts installed on the plate here. So, and it doesn't say anything about installing them. And I did not receive any sort of uh, fender washers or anything. So they almost make it look like these just go through the plate and then bolt to the plate itself and kind of act as an alignment dowel. But I don't like that. We're gonna go one step further. All right guys, so it's actually the next day. I went to Home Depot and I got a couple of different size fender washers, 5 16 center hole for those two bolts here that are gonna go through the skid plate and the fender washer is gonna kind of help sandwich the plate a little bit and give me a little more peace of mind. All right, I didn't film it because it was a tight area and it would have been very difficult, but you can see I got the two uh, 5 16 bolts and the the washers that they came with and then I put the bolt through the fender washers that I just got and then on the bottom side it just passes through the plate and have the provided uh, nylock nuts started right there no washers on the plate side and you should be able to see here that you get a little movement out of this and what I'm gonna do is position it as far back as possible because when we're ramming uh, snow with the plow, it's gonna shove everything back. And so if we already have the bracket in the furthest back position like that, uh, it can't go anywhere. So I'm gonna put it in the backmost position, but still make sure that it's straight underneath and then uh, tighten everything up. All right, I've got all three of the 5 16 bolts tightened down as well as the two quarter inch bolts here for the uh, truss. Again, these quarter inch bolts use a 11 millimeter or 7 16 socket and the 5 16 bigger bolts use a half inch. So now really the only thing left is to install these U-bolts. I've taken the nuts off of them. Once everything's tightened up, you need to make sure because this U-bolt's gonna come from the top side, but you need to make sure that it can slip by the frame because what this is gonna do is actually go over the top of the frame and then it needs to come through uh, this hole right here. And so if the hole on this plate is underneath the frame, then you're gonna have to adjust this plate. You need to be able to get this through there. 
and it looks like mine is good. So what we need to do is take a quarter inch drill bit and actually drill two holes, one right here through the metal skid plate and then one on the other side uh, for the other U-bolt. There's literally just enough ground clearance. <laughs> And now let's try to slip this on here. If your U-bolt is wider or narrower than the bolts that are, the holes that are drilled in the bracket, uh, you might need to use like a pliers to either pinch them closer together or spread them apart. Uh, I think mine is pretty good. All right, I got it close by wiggling, but I think I'm gonna have to tap it in with the hammer. It's just hanging up on this inner hole just a tiny bit there. All right, there we go. After a little persuasion, I was able to get it started uh, through there enough to where I could get the nuts started. Now I'm just gonna use the nuts to alternate from each nut back and forth to carefully suck the U-bolt down the rest of the way. These are just quarter inch bolts, remember, so don't wanna break them. All right, um, doesn't need to be anything too ridiculously tight. I don't have a torque for those, just snug pretty much. You wanna have the U-bolt obviously tight against the frame. And uh, now we'll repeat the same steps on the other side. Now on this uh, specific wheeler, I have a coolant hose running here. So I have to be really careful when I drill the other hole through the skid plate, don't wanna poke that and make a big old coolant leak. So just keep that in mind when you're drilling. Uh, be aware of anything that might be on the other side of where you're drilling. Also had to lift and push this hose out of the way to get the U-bolt into place and started. It uh, looks like it's coming through now so I can start the nuts and tap that the rest of the way down. This side is a lot easier to get at with a hammer. All right, the plate is fully attached. The directions say that this is supposed to be uh, permanently affixed to the wheeler and that it's not gonna snag or get in your way. Um, in normal daily operation, I can agree with that. But I mean, if you're gonna go off-roading with it, like I do clearly, um, the bolts and the brackets do hang down about an inch. So you are gonna lose a little bit of clearance. Uh, there's some potential for these to get bent or hung up on rocks or something if you're really off-roading it. But, um, you know, that'll give you an idea how much ground clearance you still have. And now the last step is to uh, hook up the push tube here. And now we're gonna get the plow assembly in place underneath the ATV. So once the plow assembly is kind of into position, you can lift this up and these brackets should go in between right here in the slots. And you can pick whatever hole you want. I'm gonna mount mine, I don't know, maybe the back one, try that. Shouldn't really matter, it's only about an inch and a half uh, difference if you do need to adjust the plow, but. Bring it back a little bit. Pretty snug fit. And then the clip is just gonna hook back on the pin on the other side there and it's, it can free pivot like that. And we'll repeat the same step on that side to get that pin in. There we go. Then we're gonna run the winch out. Until it's out far enough. Where we can hook it on this bracket here, just through the hole that and once the winch is hooked up we should have a functioning plow it doesn't sit perfectly flat I'll show you here so that stop is on the ground and that one is not. But once you drop the full weight of the plow, it evens up. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that. Maybe one of the brackets aren't perfectly straight. 
but as long as it's flat with the weight of the plow, we're good. I might actually adjust these runners up some more. Looks like we got like an inch of gap there. I want to get the blade as close to the ground as possible without it touching. So I'm gonna adjust those quickly and bend over the cotter keys that we have not bent over yet. All right, there we have it. I have the stops at their very lowest setting. So hopefully, as you can see, there's maybe a quarter inch, probably less gap under the blade now, which is what I want. And then to bend the cotter keys over, you can just use a small pliers or a screwdriver. And you don't have to bend too much. You can honestly just kind of bend one of the ears just a little bit because it's a pretty darn tight fit in here as it is as you can see uh, so i just bend it a little bit just to keep it from popping out and you should be good that should be plenty right there all right there it is out in the daylight everything put on you can see it definitely pulls the front end of the wheeler down a little bit because it is steel Uh, you get about 10 inches worth of ground clearance on this side and about a foot on that side and when it's all the way up the push tubes bottom out on the bottom skid plate that keeps keeps it from coming up any higher so that's all you get out of it And then if you want to uh, tilt the blade, what you'll do is have it off the ground, winched up a little bit, and then you can pull this uh, forwards. If you can't pull it towards the front of the plow, uh, you may have to wiggle the plow a little bit while you're lifting on it just to kind of get it freed up. And then you just hold the lever back while you pivot the plow and then just wiggle the blade until it locks back into position. Like so. So that's that. Um, I'll try to do try to do a review video when I can actually use it to plow and do another review down the road, see how it holds up over time. But uh, so far, it seems to be a decent uh, value for the money. It's one of the cheaper kits I could find that actually seemed like it was still somewhat uh, sturdy. So hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for more videos like this, and check me out on Facebook at Tony the Truck Guy. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.